Go Home Lake. Uh, it's just north of uh, the Gibson R River. And I'm heading out for just one night, first night of the winter camping season. It's January 30th today. So I actually debated whether or not to bring snowshoes today. I even almost left them in the truck when I got here, but it's definitely not snow here. The flotation is going to come in handy. I've got uh, my backpack is 36 and a half pounds, including about nine pounds of water. I've got uh, four liters. Actually, I'm going to adjust that because that's bouncing. But uh, the gators are a must too. So I'm wearing my uh, mid-season, what kind of mild-season boots in Merrells, but they're short and they go up to there. That's six inch I guess. I usually wear the polar, a Merrell polar um, eight inch when the snow gets deeper and the temperatures get colder. But these breathe better for this, type of, this uh, warm temperature. So I'm going to follow this driveway for a little bit and then I'm going to head south and try to set up camp down somewhere on the Gibson River, maybe at that dam uh, where the musquash dumps into the Gibson River. There'll be open water there which would be good for getting water, for drinking and cooking, but we'll see. I'll do some exploring. I'd prefer the colder temperature. It's easier to regulate your body temperature than that. And if you get cold, you can get moving and to heat up or consume more calories or something. But uh, when it's warm like this, it's also damp. So my issue right now, I'm, I'm dressed lightly for the for the uh, track in the exertion, as I am sweating. Uh, I have one, three layers total. I've got one base layer, which is uh, poor tech thermal underwear. Then I have this Arcteryx, I forget what the their proprietary fill is, but it's a, just a thin fill of um, insulation. And that's just a just a vest, and it's got just fabric on the sides for, uh, for, for breathing. And this Cortex jacket reads fairly well, Ar Arcteryx jackets. It's a pretty high-end jacket, but what I need to do is either take it off or vent the, vent the pits because I'm starting to sweat already. I've only been on the trail for half an hour. I still have at least a couple hours to go. So that opens right up. Pockets up. Okay, so I must be getting closer to three degrees because I am overheating. I already took off the wind blare that was holding heat in the rain jacket. But I gotta take this vest off now too. Not surprisingly, there's a big deer track. I guess it's probably a big buck. That uh, didn't head to any yard, deer yard, at least not yet. It's January 30th. Not enough snow to force him to go to the yard. So, probably uh, see sign of a few deer around, even though this is not a protected area uh, from severe weather. So. The deer wouldn't be here in the winter uh, unless it's mild. Again. Where a fox has been hunting through here. Oh. It, didn't, it doesn't look like he got that grouse, but that was a grouse uh, buried in the snow. A lot of droppings from it. It's been there for at least a day. They'll do that, they'll dive right in the snow, let the snow cover them up. And the fox can smell that through the snow.
nice spot for a campsite. Open water down below, close to the peak, so that the cold air that uh, settles at night settles down by the lake and not up here. A nice big rock that I could actually sleep alongside and have a fire that reflects off of it. Very cool spot actually. Hmm. There's plenty on going further but let's check this out. Bears in this area. I'll be going down to the water to get water. Good over there, actually. Drinking water. Be careful here, the water is moving so that is open. Check this out. Going by the map only and topography as I came on each lake I had a good idea of where I was or each uh, bay or finger of, uh, of the lake. So I was heading the right direction the whole time. I checked my compass it said I was going the wrong way completely like exactly opposite. The pulled out my phone I actually have signal GPS works on it. That blue dot is where I am. Half an hour ago I was up here. So I did, didn't feel right. I was on the right side of the river, or the the, the uh, Long Bay, and uh, so I figured, yeah, if I head south, all, or along that bay, had a head down on there, I'd be heading south. But look at the compass here, and look at the compass on the GPS. It's pointing north. sleeping bag, my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag liner, and pillow all inside this. Put my head at this end. So here's my entire kit. There's my bed. So, which for this kind of camping is perfect. Pocket boy. That's long enough. It's all this dry stuff on the trees is perfect for cutting that. Then I have my belt knife. With the belt knife I can 
split as much wood as I need of this size. And there's my food, extra clothing, and just miscellaneous camp gear. Down here I've got a snow shovel, which came in handy for clearing a spot for the fire there and for my bedding area. It's seven, 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. It's very still out, but I uh, looked at the radar and there is a big band of of uh, rain coming in, so I'm definitely going to pack up fairly quickly and get out. But anyway, it's so calm right now. You can hear those waterfalls, the Musquash River, emptying into the Gibson River. That's probably about a kilometer away. Yeah, that was too warm. And then middle of the night, I don't know what time it was, but a fox came in and walked right through here. I'm a light sleeper. I actually was sleeping pretty well at that time. But I could hear him walking around here so I turned over and looked looked out and, and he was standing right about here. I, I talked to him, looked at me and then he turned around and went down over there. Oh yeah, I can see where he went. Went down the face of the cliff. But yeah, he actually he, walk towards me. Hmm. Yeah, one thing worth investing in for winter camping is a good headlamp. This is the uh, black diamond. I think this is the storm which is uh, waterproof and also very bright. I can't remember the candles, candle power but it's got a few different settings. You can dim the side lights uh, I don't remember all the settings. And then red light, which I really like for nighttime walking. And if you're watching an animal or something, they, they don't spook from the red light. But anyway, in the winter, use it a lot because it gets dark early today. Last night it got dark at 5.30. It's just after 7, it's still not light now, so the light gets used a lot. In the summer, I bring it, but I don't think on my seven day or three day trips last year. I don't think I used it more than maybe five minutes a trip if that. Some trips I didn't use it at all. Uh, I just go to bed when it gets dark and I get up when it gets light. But in the winter it's val it's invaluable and you should always uh, use lithium batteries that don't freeze and they last long uh, and have a backup set as well because you are going to need this at this time of year. I was about to head down to the river to get some water, make some tea and you know, oatmeal. And I remember that the snow was too deep for these boots. It's only six inch boots and the snow is probably a foot deep. So anyway, instead of putting my snowshoes on, I like to wear these gaiters. They uh, do a great job of keeping the snow out. These boots are, are uh, Perfect for these conditions. I found my bigger winter boots, taller winter boots, are just too hot for these conditions. But these gaiters are fantastic. 
fantastic. Are, are very good for these conditions as well. They're uh, very durable. I waxed them fairly recently, so they're somewhat waterproof, water resistant, but um, slightly too warm maybe for the conditions. Don't breathe quite as well as some of my synthetic pants. And these things warm you up too. So they're uh, Gore-Tex, they do breathe, but still hold some heat in my calves. Tend to get Down to the river to get some water. When I was choosing a campsite last night, one thing I was keeping in mind is that it's noticeably cooler in the lower areas, and it certainly is much colder down here than it is up where I put the campsite. Cold air flows down at night, settles into the lower areas, so this is, especially in this, uh, this narrows, it's a real pocket with high ground all around it, so all the cold air settles down into here over me. So this is, like I said, it's actually it's very noticeably colder than it is up at the campsite. But this is where the water is. I'm debating whether to get closer to the water there and risk uh, going through the ice or just fill it up with, uh, with icicles instead of melt bees. water, a little less food, probably uh, four pounds, three pounds. So this compass is still completely screwed up. It's exactly the opposite, so I'm heading where the arrow, where this arrow is pointed, which is northeast, and this is saying it's southwest. If you were in a survival situation, here's a good spot to set up a, a snare for uh, snowshoe hares in this case. So that's a fairly regular run. Not the uh, not the most um, tracked I've seen, but it's fairly steady, back and forth. Of it. So anyway, wherever there's a narrowing spot like that, it's an opportunity to make a put a snare in there and add a couple of obstru obstructions to force them through through your snare but back there and I'm sure if you follow this trail you'd find other spots that are a little bit better even tighter that they go through but, uh, and the sun is out it's supposed to go up to six or seven or eight degrees in periods of rain that looks Actually, you can see the rain clouds on the horizon over there to the south, but I'll probably beat them back to the truck, so beautiful day for a walk.